<laughs> Hello, Lala Watchers. I'm Molly. Hi, Molly. I'm Scribe. One of the co-founders and the creative director of the Lala. And today I'm here to talk to you about love. Aww. More like heartbreak, kind of. Yeah. I'm here to talk about one-sided love. You mean stalking? I kind of like to think of myself as a one-sided love guru. You teach people how to become stalkers? I, I'm i scared, Molly. Here is my four-step healing process. Step number one, you gotta realize it's not you, it's the situation. The situation? Is he still alive? Oh, 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 you mean the situation. You mean the relationship. The relationship you are conceivably a part of? At least in your head? Are, are you sure you're not talking about stalking? The first thing that we do when we're crazy about someone and they don't feel the same way back, what's the first question you ask? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, is there a burglar alarm on their house? What's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Did I, did I say something wrong? Was one of my jokes not funny? Did I have something in my teeth? Did I have something in my teeth? Molly, your teeth are perfect. Dare I say they are immaculate. We immediately put the blame on ourselves and think it's something that we did or something about us that that other person doesn't like. Don't ever think you need to change anything about yourself to make someone like you. Okay, stocking jokes aside for a moment, but only for a moment, I would like to address something that's relatively serious that she's bringing up here that I think is bad advice. Assuming you are actually in a relationship to begin with and not imagining one, when a relationship ends, you can gain the most valuable information about yourself from stopping for a moment and honestly looking at the circumstances that led up to the breakup. How much of it was your fault? Because you are not blameless. That's not to say there's not going to be times where the person on the other side of the equation has done the horrible thing. They've cheated on you, they've lied to you in some fashion. However, these things, even the worst things like that, do not occur in a vacuum. There were warning signs. You may not see them until after the fact, hindsight being 2020. But regardless of it was a contentious breakup or an amicable one, if you're upset about it, you have to be brutally honest with yourself about where the line is between how much of it was your involvement and how much of it was the other person's involvement. The most self-development you'll probably gain in life is through your relationships, whether they be romantic or otherwise. How you interact with other people, how you deal with loss, how you deal with success, and so on. Long story short, when a relationship ends, do not imagine that you had nothing to do with it. Step number two, don't invalidate your feelings. The second thing you think is that you're crazy. You can totally get along with someone and then not want to be in a romantic relationship with you. I don't completely disagree with Molly here. It is possible to maintain a friendly relationship with an ex or even with someone who you wanted to be with, but they don't return your feelings. Uh, the question is whether or not you can handle it. And depending on the circumstances of either the breakup or how crazy obsessed you were with the person, the ability to establish or maintain a friendly relationship with that person is usually entirely dependent on you. But it doesn't mean that you're crazy for feeling the way you do. Unless what you are feeling is in stark disproportion to reality. Because when that happens, then yes, you are crazy. Let's just be honest about this, okay, Molly? Step three, recognize all the double-sided loves in your life. Oh, are we talking three ways? We're talking three ways, right? Three ways? Your best friends, they think you're amazing. Recognize how much they love you. Yeah, but friendship love isn't really the love we're talking about here, is it? I mean, well, unless it's friends with benefits. Do you love to do yoga? Yoda? Yoga? Yogi? Yoga? Oh, yoga. Yoga. I don't know. Yoga? Yeah, I, I, I think I could do yoga. Yeah. 
Well, yoga loves you back because it makes you feel good and you feel happy when you're doing it. I don't know. It looks like a lot of work and exercise and sweating and I don't really stand moisture well. I mean, I'm, I'm just a painting. I'm kind of rigid, if you know what I mean. Or maybe it's painting. I am a painting. Focus your love in that area where you know it's going to be reciprocated. Uh, so, masturbation. Okay. Step number four, if you really need closure, just say something. Uh-oh. This is going to be cringy, isn't it, Molly? So you could say, hey, so-and-so. You so-and-so. You know, I just wanted to clear the air. I love spending time with you. You're such a great friend to me, and I have some romantic feelings for you. And if you don't have those back, totally cool. So-and-so is dialing 911, Molly. I just want to know where you stand so I can just move on to the next one. So now you're a serial stalker? Oh, Molly. And if you act like you've got, like, other people lined up, you don't really have to. Yes, let's add lying on to the list of sins we're committing here. Then you'll get the closure you need. Yeah, it might suck. But, you know, life's not a rom-com. Life is... Like a box of chocolates. Life is so much better. There are so many wonderful people out there just waiting to love someone like you. You're just... you're just fixated on the wrong one. That's right. You're just fixated on the wrong one. What you need to do is go fixate on someone else. And if that doesn't work, move on to the next one.